When talking about Argentina, the first images that come to mind are often those of a couple of tango dancers moving to the rhythm of Carlos Gardel chords, such as those we can hear at the turn of an alley in the district of La Boca in Buenos Aires. But for the 28 journalist bloggers from different continents, this essential sightseeing location is primarily the starting point of an adventure driven by another kind of music, the one made by the turbocharged four-cylinder that gives life to the Mini Countryman 4-4. They are fresh from the assembly line and for the next 10 days will retrace the trail of the Dakar Rally. A novel motoring adventure starts under the sun at Cordoba Airport in the heart of Argentina with the discovery of the cars. We don't really know what's going to happen. I'm a little bit kind of nervous about what's going to be taking place over the next seven days, so, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. This motoring adventure is also that of a bold gamble on the part of the organizer who decided to play the card of minimalist preparation as the cars are just equipped with stock tires and shock absorbers and a roof rack for a second spare wheel and a gasoline jerry can. C'est le véhicule de la gamme qui est le plus off-road et c'est un peu aussi dans cet état d'esprit qu'on a cherché à organiser cet événement pour montrer qu'un tel véhicule n'est pas seulement fait finalement pour le côté urbain puisque la marque Mini est une, vie, est une marque très urbaine mais c'est aussi des véhicules et des produits qui nous permettent d'aller voyager, découvrir, hors des sentiers battus et c'est ce qu'on fait avec cet événement. Immersed in a reality that is far from virtual, the bloggers are ready to tackle the large tracks crossing the Andes with a tranquil mind. Well, almost, because this 2,000 km journey is full of surprises that will need to be managed as the days and meetings go by. This will happen in a grandiose decor that is still unknown to most. The Argentina tour begins with a stop at the Hacienda de Campo, 80 km north of Cordoba a must for the photo shoot crew. The team is gathered around a welcome drink and a swimming pool before the packs are checked one last time. Inside you have everything. everything. Toothpaste, oh, toilet paper, you have some, uh, some shower gel, everything you need to survive the desert. The first stage is 140 kilometers long and will take the Mini Cordoba group to the camp of La Posta, taking small paved roads that wind through the mountains of the San Luis province to arrive on the starting tracks of the Riora. The installation of the first makeshift camp is the opportunity for everyone to find their feet, but also for some of the participants to learn how to pitch a tent or inflate a mattress to ensure a comfortable night under the starry sky of the southern hemisphere. Who says bloggers says guaranteed internet? Airbus, one of the adventure partners, made this possible by installing an Astrium satellite station every day before sunset which was powered by generators to overcome the lack of electricity. This is a rare sight on the high Argentine plateau, as cows and sheep are the only usual inhabitants. Uh, make sure you, you collect all your goods, you know, the connection, everything, make sure you don't forget anything because we can't come back, okay? This morning you're gonna go up the hill, okay? And uh, when, when you arrive at the gate, you know, there's a gate with uh, rocks, you turn left, you don't pass the gate, okay? Just at the gate, you turn left. 
At the start of the second stage, it's time to get down to business, as there is a 210 km trip ahead, with more than 150 km of tracks that connect to the village of Shepes and its race course, where we expect to find a nice surprise. But for now, we must first outsmart a difficult terrain filled with traps. By midday, the lunch break in a local hostel is a relief, as there is limited visibility the slopes that lined with sharp stones. The risk of placing a wheel in the wrong places is permanent. If we add to this the heat and altitude, it's no longer a fitness trail, but a real adventure away from the usual comfort zones that mark our daily lives. An arid and rocky morning landscape gives way to the amazing track of the seven tunnels, which leads us down to a sea of greenery confirming, if it had been necessary, the incredible diversity that Argentina has to offer. Despite this cozy decor and a seemingly easy run, Flat tires remain the main reason for performing outdoor mechanical stops. Argentina is above all the land of gauchos and horses. The Chapez stage will be an opportunity to see them in action at a party organized in our honor which will bring together the best riders in the area. This is an eagerly awaited moment by all the village inhabitants who have come to attend a unique show, strong emotions and again dust. This is the time of the La Sortida, a traditional test that is centuries old, which consists of throwing a rod through a ring placed three meters high while galloping at the same time. Then comes the inevitable horse race on which all the inhabitants of the village have placed bets. Another facet of the Argentinian culture awaits participants when they are invited to an asado. For the third stage, the distance amounts to 410 kilometers of tar, embellished with an unforgettable trip to the slopes of the Luna Park, where fossils of prehistoric animals that inhabited the region millions of years ago now rest for eternity. Once again, the scenery enters the fantastical, with a mixture of shapes and very surprising colors. Of course, more puncture breaks take place, as none of the participants are able to avoid them. Another highlight of this paved day is the visit to the Talampaya National Park. A World Heritage Site, this canyon was discovered by chance in 1970. It rises to 1,300 meters above sea level and has a few impressive discoveries, like its red chimney-shaped rock faces that reach 145 meters in height.
back behind the wheel of the Mini, we still have some spectacular passes to cross before arriving at Villa Union, which we reach after a nine-hour drive and a spectacular final pass, worthy of a rally stage. To justify the enthusiasm seen on the roadside, you should know that at this time of the journey, we are on the same route as the one used by the competitors of the Dakar Rally, an event that has grown in popularity and which draws thousands of Argentinian aficionados in its wake. The camp is made in the centre of the village for the night and already the cooks need to deal with the inevitable asado. A little further away, the atmosphere is more reflective. For the participants, this is the moment to get to work. It's time to connect to the internet and tell the readers about the day's experience. From Beijing and London to Tokyo and Barcelona, the mini-adventure is shared daily and almost live. The following morning, a 110-kilometer drive from Chilichito leads us to a direct contact with the competitors of the Dakar Rally, to the delight of all the fans of the event. Wow. This is my dream. This is my dream. My dream. After five days of racing, all the teams involved in the Dakar Rally take advantage of this rest day to review mechanical issues. This is a unique opportunity for our group to get close to the racing version of their Mini which has won here every year since 2012. Okay, so we're gonna enter right now all together and we stay first in the middle. Then I'll introduce you to Thomas Quant, which, who is the mic on pod basically and using and dealing with the entire X-ray team. So he's handling everything, okay? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> For participants of the mini adventure, this is a unique opportunity to see behind the scenes of this legendary rally and to dive into the fascinating world of Team X Raid. Well, everything is interesting, I think. It's, uh, it's really so many people, and they're so busy with the cars and so concentrated. I think it's really. I like it. I like the atmosphere a lot. Just to explain you, the car weight is approximately 1.95 tons, so it's quite heavy. It's got four disc brakes. Like icing on a cake, Team X Raid has given us a great honor because it's Sven Quant, BMW's hair in person, who introduces us to the work of his team and shows us the vehicles participating in the Dakar. And the 170 km special stage, the average speed was 145 in off road or dirt roads. Yeah? I can tell you, you will not find a lot on circuit racing like this average speed, so it is crazy what you can do with a car like this. A crazy rhythm that will allow the Mini 4-4 driven by Nassar al Atia to win the Dakar Rally for the fourth time in a row. But, for us, this is not about running against the clock. It's at a small nut farm that the whole team gathers for a cultural breakfast, very rich in protein. Around the table, the conversation revolves around the warm welcome met every day in this country and the beautiful scenery already viewed. Yet, the most impressive is still to come. It's after the team makes an attempt at nut cracking during an improvised workshop, all in good faith, that everyone hits the road. The team is mixed with the Dakar competitors who themselves are heading to the departure of their special stage. After the decibels of the Dakar, we'll discover, not far from London, on Route 40, the ruins of El Chincal Kimiville, a regional capital of the late Inca Empire. Its civilization disappeared in the middle of the 16th century, and it now rests lost in the middle of a majestic plateau surrounded by mountains. If the worshippers of the Sun God are long gone, their music and dancing perpetuates the traditions of an ancient culture that is still very much alive today. Back on Route 40, and with our compasses due north towards Bolivia, we leave to drive a 500km stage with only 80km of track.
The lack of dirt roads in this stage will allow us to arrive just after sunset in Antofagasta de la Sierra. Although the day was long for our group, this is an occasion to organize an event highly anticipated by all the children of this small village, lost in the middle of nowhere. Their parents are also present, always ready to welcome travelers wherever they come from. This is once again the opportunity to experience the kindness of the people and their hospitality. A drawing competition was improvised with all the children, while farmers are busy around a large barbecue, ready to feed the merry band that livens up the village. To everyone's delight, the bloggers invite the little ones aboard the minis to tour the village. At this time, we don't know who is happiest, the children or the adults. Fantastic. This evening of sharing and good times will remain for many, both young and old, a truly unforgettable moment. The next day, a 240-kilometer stage will lead us to Tola Grande in the Salta province, where a succession of tracks and perched passes reach over 4,800 meters above sea level. Enough to leave you breathless at all levels. In this part of the world that seems to have been forgotten by man, the temperature can exceed 40 degrees despite the altitude and opportunities to find shade are scarce. Nothing grows here if not for a few shrubs and lichens that delight llamas of which there are many in the region. In this grandiose and at times hostile environment, the enthusiasm of the participants is never lost thanks to such a majestic setting. <laughs> Coming over the crest over there and suddenly seeing this in front of you. I don't think I've seen some pretty cool sights and this blows it away. Everything until now has just been a sort of preparation for this view. It makes everything look useless, rubbish, stunning. I can't even take it in. I've never seen anything like this before. The discovery of these huge salars, these majestic salt flats that serve as a natural backdrop to the Altiplano, really have something to be admired and will leave you speechless. This view on a mineral world gives you a feeling of visiting another planet where everything is greatness and beauty in its raw state. Evolving in a grandiose setting such as this, however, requires us to remain vigilant because, as always, wrongdoings are very quickly punished. On a crevé. A priori, on a la palme. Euh... En fait, on a touché du bois pendant quasiment une semaine. On voyait les gens au bord de la route en train de en train de réparer. On leur faisait des petits coucou, genre c'est là. Et puis, euh... bah, c'est clair que cette piste là, elle. Elle est sympa. Par contre, elle est traître. Il y avait une pierre sur le côté que j'ai pas vue. Que euh, bon, j'aurais dû écouter ma copilote. 
Et voilà, tout ça, bonita. tout ça parce que bon bah on n'écoute pas sa copilote. Voilà, bravo, super ah, bah. For those who doubt which direction to take, the best way to stay on track is to rely on Trippy, an electronic roadbook that shows which route to follow and also confirms the information written on the paper roadbook. Following the track shown on the screen, we find ourselves in a tiny green oasis of trees, which proves to be the perfect place for a lunch break. Um, chicken with the peas. Peas. Good. The road. The road is very beautiful. The very beautiful. The best road in the world. This. The best world. Landscape is a. Uh, Meraviglia, meraviglia! The sun is about to set when we arrive in the mining town of Tola Grande. A remote area of the Cordillera in the Andes, filled with brick shacks with corrugated iron roofs, which once housed the miners of the Puna region. You will have some, uh, some very nice view today at the kilometer 40. At first light, everyone meets in the breakfast room for the day's briefing that will inform blogs on the stage in which they will have to jump including specific instructions on a refueling stop that no one can afford to miss. You come back for the lunch, uh, 100 meters, 200 meters. If the original timing was not stuck to, it's the full group of minis that starts in the early hours of the day. The objective of this penultimate stage is to reach the city of Purnamarca, 340 kilometers away, of which 280 are desert tracks running through the Andes province. At this time of the trip, we're in the heart of the Altiplano in the Andes. Some of the mountain peaks around us reach beyond 6,000 meters. Oxygen is therefore as rare as petrol, and so it's no coincidence that the only petrol station is San Antonio de los Cobres is already full when we arrive. Although we still have a very short connecting stage left to drive, the organizer decided to conclude this first mini-adventure by gathering all the participants on a huge salt lake for the ultimate family photo, which in itself symbolized the spirit of this incredible journey in Argentina, far from the beaten track. We are arrivé au salaire de la Guayas Grandes, avec toutes les voitures, sont en bon état, les gens sont en bonne santé. Donc on va faire une image avec tout le monde avec le mot aventure, parce que mini c'est quand même l'aventure. The message is clear. See you next year on another playing field for a brand new adventure.